Hello, friends and goats. Welcome to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin, and we're super glad you're here for another Caltime Deck Tech. Before we begin, I just wanted to mention that this episode and podcast is sponsored by GameGrid, and we will include a full deck list in the show notes below, but you can take that to GameGrid's website, put those cards in, and get them shipped directly to your house. Super helps us out. You're going to want these cards anyway, because this deck is sweet, so get cards and support us at the same time. Another reminder that this show and this everything is brought to you by you and our lovely patrons at patreon.com slash command valley. If you are not already a patron, I invite you to go and check out our Patreon, see our awesome exclusive perks, merch, and if you want to play commander games over Discord with the Command Valley, Patreon is your place to go. All right, goats, Cal time is just around the corner, and we have another commander that was spoiled that got me so excited, I literally built this deck in the same day that it was spoiled. This commander is Vega the Watcher. For one, white, blue, we have a 2-2 legendary creature, Bird Spirit, with flying. And whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. If you have been playing Magic for a short or long time, then you know there are plenty of ways of being able to cast spells outside our hand, whether it be our spells in our graveyard, libraries, or our opponent's spells. We have a lot of ways of being able to trigger Vega and draw a lot of cards. Another reason why I like Vega is because Vega is more of an engine than it is a finisher or a game ender. A lot of the commanders that we see rely solely on the commander, and that can feel really bad when you cast your commander and get it removed immediately, but Vega is kind of one that flies under the radar. Get it? Because he flies because he's an owl? <clears throat> Anyways, you can get away with casting Vega and having it stick around while you just accrue value over the course of the game by casting spells from outside your hand. Before we do that, I quickly wanted to mention the ramp in this deck because that is going to be the most important thing that we need. A lot of the spells that we have are on the higher CMC side, so we got to make sure that we have a lot of ramp and a lot of mana to get there. So very quickly, we have Soul Ring that can tap for two mana for one generic. We have Wafer Bobble that can get us a land into the battlefield tapped. Arcane Signet and Azorius Signet are both signets in this deck. Thought Vessel, which taps for a colorless and also gives us no maximum hand size, which is very relevant. Mindstone, which taps for a mana and can also draw a card later in the game. Thran Dynamo is an artifact that taps for three generic. And then we have Gilded Lotus, which taps for three mana of any color. So let's split these into two different sections. We have the spells that we're going to cast that are ours outside of our hand, and we also have the spells that we're going to cast from our opponents. Both of these are going to trigger Vega. He doesn't care whether you're casting your spell, he just cares whether you're casting a spell and whether it's from your hand or not. So let's start with casting our own spells. There is a multitude of ways to do that. The first one is one that we saw in Eldraine. It is the adventure mechanic, a mechanic that allows us to cast a spell and put it in the adventure zone and cast it later from the adventure zone. So this will trigger Vega because it's being cast from the adventure zone rather than our hand. So the couple that we have in here, we have Giant Killer, which is one white for a one two and for one and a white you can tap him to tap target creature but you can also use his adventure which is chopped down which is two and a white for an instant destroy target creature with power four or greater so the way that works is that you can cast chop down first to destroy target creature with power four or greater and then ship it off to the adventure zone and cast it later for just one generic for the one two this will trigger Vega and draw us a card. Next up, we have Hypnotic Sprite, which can adventure for two and a blue, called Mesmeric Glare, which you can cast at an instant speed, counter target spell with converted mana cost three or less, ship it off to the adventure zone, and then cast it later from the adventure zone for two blue, a flying 2-1 fairy. Brazen Borrow is one blue blue for a 3-1 fairy rogue with flash and flying, and can only block creatures with flying. And you can also use its adventure, which is Petty Theft for one and a blue, return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. The next mechanic we're going to go over is the suspend mechanic. Now the way that suspend works is you can suspend it for its suspend cost and you basically exile it with time counters on it. And when the time counters are removed, you can cast it from exile without paying its mana cost. Now it's being cast from exile, which means it will trigger Vega and we will draw a card. First up, we've got Veiling Oddity, which is three to blue for a two, three illusion. And you can also suspend him for one and a blue. You suspend four. When the last time counter is removed from Veiling Oddity, while it's removed from the game, creatures are unblockable this turn. So just some extra value stacked on the suspend. Riftwing Cloudskate is three blue blue for a two two flying illusion. And when he comes into play, return target permanent to its owner's hand. And you can also spend it for one and a blue. Ivory Giant is five white white for a three four giant. When he comes into play, tap all non-white creatures. You can suspend it for five for one white. 
Deep Sea Kraken is 7 blue 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 for a 6 6 Kraken. It's unblockable and you can suspend it for 2 and a blue for 9, meaning it has 9 time counters on it. And whenever an opponent plays a spell, if Deep Sea Kraken is suspended, remove a time counter from it. Ancestral Vision is a sorcery with no mana cost, with suspend 4 for 1 blue. And when you cast it, target player draws 3 cards. And lastly, we have Reality Strobe, which is 4 blue blue for sorcery. Return target permanent to its owner's hand and remove Reality Strobe from the game with 3 time counters on it. You can also suspend it for two and a blue. So when you cast it, you return a permanent to its owner's hand and then it exiles itself with three time counters. So it just perpetually repeats itself and you can cast it for free every three turns, draw cards from Vega while returning permanents to their owner's hands. The next category is our graveyard category. Now this can encompass a lot of things, basically anything that has flashback, things that say that you can cast spells from your graveyard, all of these will trigger Vega. So we have Torrential Gear Hulk, which is 4 blue blue for an artifact creature construct with flash and when he enters the battlefield you may cast target instant card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card will be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Scholar of the Lost Trove is 5 blue blue for a flying sphinx. When he enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant, sorcery, or artifact card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If an instant or sorcery spell cast this way would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Mission briefing is 2 blue for an instant, surveil 2. Then choose an instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Mash diminish is 1 and a blue for a sorcery until your next turn. Creatures target player controls have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. You can also flash it back for 3 and a blue, which will trigger Vega since you're casting it from your graveyard. Next up we have the Cascade mechanic. Now, the, now Cascade is an ability that reads when you cast this spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost, put the exile cards in the bottom of your library in any order. So this means that you can cast a spell from your library which will trigger Vega. So the Cascade cards that we have in here, there are only two. The first one is Forceful Denial, which is three blue blue for an instant with Cascade and it counters target spell. We also have Sakashima's Prodigy, which is four blue blue for a creature shapeshifter with flash, Cascade. With flash and Cascade, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any permanent that entered the battlefield this turn. Next up, we have a mechanic that came just recently from our Return to Return to Ravnica, and that is Jumpstart. The way that Jumpstart reads is that you can cast the spell from your graveyard by discarding a card as well as paying its mana cost. We have Quasi Duplicate, which is one blue blue for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target creature with control and also has jumpstart. We also have Chemister's Insight, which is three and a blue for an instant. Draw two cards and you may also use its jumpstart by casting it from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. Keep in mind you do have to exile these cards after you jumpstart them, but it's nice to get two uses off of these cards and also draw cards off of Vega when you do jumpstart it. Running us out, we have probably one of the most common uses of casting from outside of our hand, and that is just top of the deck casting. And that is just casting cards from the top of the library. So we have two cards that have been around in Magic for a long time, Future Sight and Magus of the Future, which both read the same thing, one is a creature and one is an enchantment, but you play with the top card of your library revealed, and you may play the top card of your library. So since this is not in our hand, we can draw cards off of Vega by casting things with Future Sight or Magus of the Future. And lastly, since we are talking about Cal Time, of course we have to talk about the cards that synergize the best with Vega, and that is the Foretell mechanic. Foretell is a mechanic that says during your turn you may pay two generic and exile this card from your hand face down, cast it on a later turn for its Foretell cost. When we do cast it for its Foretell cost, it will be cast from exile so it will trigger Vega and we will draw a card. The first one we have is Saw It Coming, which is one blue blue for an instant. It says counter target spell, but you can foretell it for a one and a blue. Alrun's Epiphany is 5 blue blue for a sorcery, create 2 1-1 one, one bluebird creature tokens with flying and take an extra turn after this one then exile Alrun's Epiphany. You can foretell it for 4 blue blue. Raven Form is 2 and a blue for a sorcery, exile target artifact or creature, its controller creates a 1-1 one, one bluebird creature token with flying and you can foretell it for 1 blue. Starnheim Unleash is 2 white white for a sorcery, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. If this spell was foretold, create X of those tokens instead, and you can foretell it for white XX. And lastly we have Doomscar, which is 3 white white for a sorcery that says destroy all creatures, but you can foretell it for 1 white white. So that was a lot of mechanics, a lot of different ways of casting our spells from outside of our hand. But all of these do the same thing, triggering Vega, allowing us to draw cards, we can keep filling our hands and casting these spells in addition to the spells in our hand as well. Now let's talk about the spells that we're gonna cast from our opponent's decks. 
Now there isn't necessarily a mechanic that does this, but there are a lot of cards in Magic History that allow us to cast spells from our opponent's hands and from their graveyards. So first up we have Thada Adele, which is one blue blue for a 2-2 legendary creature Merfolk Rogue with Island Walk, and whenever Thada Adele, a Quisitor, deals combat damage to a player, search that player's library for an artifact card and exile it. Then that player shuffles their library. Until end of turn, you may play that card. Daxos of Miletus is one white blue for a 2-2 legendary creature human soldier. Daxos of Miletus can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. And when he deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library. You gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost, and until end of turn, you may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Deluvian Primordial is 5 blue blue for a 5-5 flying avatar. When he enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may cast up to 1 target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If a card cast this way would be put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Stolen Goods is 3 and a blue for a sorcery. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. Until end of turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Talent of the Telepath is 2, blue blue for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals the top 7 cards of his or her library. You may cast an instant or sorcery card from among them without paying its mana cost. Then that player puts the rest into his or her graveyard. And if you have Spell Mastery, you can cast up to 2 revealed instant and or sorcery cards instead of 1. Spelljack is 3, blue 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 for an instant, counter target spell, if that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard, you may play it without paying its mana cost for as long as it remains exiled, if it has X in its mana cost, X is 0. Chaos 1 is 3 generic for an artifact, for 4 generic and tap, target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exile cards that weren't cast this way onto the bottom of that library in any order. And lastly, we have Mind's Dilation, which is 5 blue blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts their first spell each turn, that player exiles the top card of their library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Now, all these cards are already super good on their own, but if we have Vigor out, we are also drawing cards into our hand while casting our opponent's spells. And that is the true power behind Vega, is that he really slips under the radar, allowing us to cast spells and draw cards repetitively. All right, now I want to do a quick warning. These next two cards are absolute chaos. If you do not like absolute chaos, I definitely do not recommend playing these cards. However, if you do like chaos and you like to have a good time, you should absolutely play these cards because they're hilarious and they go really well into this deck. The first one, they are very similar to each other. The first one is Shared Fate. For four and a blue, we have an enchantment. If a player would draw a card, that player exiles the top card of one of their opponent's libraries face down instead. Each player may look at and play cards they exiled with Shared Fate. With Shared Fate out, you will never be drawing cards from your own library on your draw step, but you can still draw from your library by casting those spells with Shared Fate as long as we have Vega out. Now this can get very chaotic because you're exiling cards from your opponent's libraries and nobody has mana to cast their own spells and it's just a lot of hectic fun. And then my personal favorite, one of the jankiest cards of all time, Knowledge Pool. For six generic, we have an artifact from Mirrored and Besieged, Imprint. When Knowledge Pool enters the battlefield, each player exiles the top three cards of their library. And whenever a player casts a spell from their hand, that player exiles it. If the player does, they may cast another non-line card exiled with Knowledge Pool without paying that card's mana cost. This card is absolutely ridiculous, and I'm not even sure yet if I want to play this card. But I can tell you that that's just that's just wild. Why do they why do they even make this card? But it does slot very well into Vega. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, the last section of this deck tech is the win condition section. Now I want to do something a little bit different for this deck tech because I actually had a tough time figuring out exactly which win conditions or, or what I wanted to put into this deck. So I'm reaching out to you, our viewers. What do you think should be the win con in this deck? Which cards would you include as win cons for this deck? Feel free to comment them in the comment section below. There are many options and many different ways to, to win in this deck. So help me out and help the other goats out by recommending what you would put in Vega the Watcher. I won't go through all the win conditions, but I will say one of my favorite win conditions that maybe you were thinking of is the Lost Oromancer's Omniscience line. Lost Oromancers is 2 white white for a 3-3 three, three human wizard with vanishing 3, and when he dies, if it had no time counters on it, you may search your library for an enchantment card and put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. If you can manage to pull that off, you can go and grab Omniscience, which is 7 blue 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 for an enchantment that says you may cast spells from your hand without paying their mana costs. Not super reliable, may not do anything, but definitely sounds like a lot of fun. 
All right, friends, that is the end of our deck tech. If you like this deck and you are looking to build it, then feel free to take on the list in the show notes below over to Game Grid's website. You can order those cards, help support the channel, and have a lot of fun playing Vega the Watcher. Another reminder, if you are not already subscribed, then please subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date on all of our deck techs, gameplay videos, and podcast episodes. If you would like to see this deck in action because I have it built already, then feel free to sign up at patreon.com slash command valley, join our tiers and our discord, and start playing commander games with the command valley folks. It's a great time, we have a lot of fun doing it, and hope you guys consider joining. All right, my goats, that is it. We will see you next time for our next Kaltheim deck tech. Griffin signing off.